I don't got no fleas. I'm telling you that right now. I don't got no fleas. That's nasty. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and actually get into it. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Traveler Hooper Podcast. <laughs> I'm your host, Alan Pettigrew, and uh, these fine gentlemen can go ahead and introduce themselves. What's up, y'all? I'm Calvin McGowan. Glad to be here once again. What's up, y'all? I'm the Flea Man, a.k.a. Philip, apparently. And it's nice to see y'all again. I appreciate that his AKA is Philip instead. Yeah. <laughs> instead of Flea Man. Uh, <clears throat> NBA comes back tomorrow. So today is prediction day. Philip, let's get into it. What are your predictions, bro? You you just gonna say what are predictions overall? You can't give me a category or nothing? No, because I didn't I didn't think this far ahead, bro. You you came up with stuff. Uh, <laughs> this guy's nuts. He's going to host and throw it at me. Uh, listen, okay, so if we're going to do this, we don't care about, okay, truthfully, like, we, if you over here guessing six men of the year, you're, little, you're doing a little too much. Like, yeah, Lou Williams probably, or Montrez Harold. Like, it is what it is. Like, It's going to be uh, Luke Nard, bro. Four years, 64 just, million. It's going to be Luke Nard. That's the only, gonna, he got to earn that, he got to earn that contract, bro. Or it's going to be Derrick Rose. You know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. Uh, or, actually, Dark Horse could be Josh Hart. Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Very but nice. it really depends on how much how well the Pelicans do. But, once again, we don't care about that award. That award don't really matter. Um, what matters is, let's see. Let's start, with the, let's start with the big one. The big one that everybody cares about. MVP. Let's talk about that. It won't be LeBron James this year. Yeah. Anthony Davis. It's going to be Anthony Davis. You really think it's going to be Anthony Davis? Because I feel like I, he's going to be in that, that ballpark where it's going to be, like, is it enough games? No. I, I think that when you play on a team with LeBron James, you, like, he has, like, even though Anthony Davis won a, or won a, uh, like, for him to become an all-time great, which... He can, and it's on the track to becoming one. Not like the all-time greatest, but an all-time great basketball player. He needs regular season MVPs. Like, if he doesn't have that, there's no if, ands, or buts about, you know, his validity in terms of a basketball player overall. So he needs this MVP. And when you put on a team with LeBron, uh, you don't get the LeBron rest minutes unless you're LeBron. You know what I mean? Like... Kyrie didn't get those minutes. Kevin Love didn't get those minutes. Like LeBron got those minutes, and Anthony Davis does not have the uh, the the cachet to get those minutes. And the Laker fans would be on your head if you over here being late, being lazy, because they are too used to people not being lazy. Like their all time greats were never lazy. You, you could you, you could say that the Lakers all time greats were flashy, but you can never call them lazy. And if you are sitting down, even if you're not lazy, like if you're like sitting out games, the perspective the, or the perspection, what's the word? What am I looking for? The perspective? Perfect. The perspective of you is that you are lazy. You know, it might not be true, but it is what it is. So Anthony Davis is probably going to be MVP this year, barring injury. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. To counter that, I'm going to go Dane. Like, I think I think they're going to be a sneaky top four seed. And for them to be a four seed, Dane has to kind of will them to the point where he's averaging like 27 points, is getting better assists, and he's going to get help defensively. Because like that's that's literally one of the biggest issues with them. They can't play any defense. They got Robert Covington now. So that will lessen it a lot. I, I, I think he, I think in like just based off what we've seen in the bubble, thirty-seven and nine. If he can even like, I'm not saying he can average thirty-seven to nine for what seventy games, but twenty-eight and eight is very dameable. And if it's that, and they can get in that top four seed, especially when they're already being counted out, I, I think that's enough. I think that that might be enough to get him some sniffs. So, like. My reason for thinking it's going to be AD is just, like, 
because like the way the the award tends to like dole out right not all the time necessarily like you've got examples that are exceptions like Westbrook but like in general the MVP tends to go to the best player on the best team and the best team is going to be the Lakers and like LeBron is not trying to carry the team for what's it 60 something games yeah. or something they're trying to squeeze in yeah so like that kind of just leaves AD to like get the lion's share of like I don't know the points and rebounds and just the numbers that you need and like they're probably gonna have the best record in the West so like it's it's the predictable argument if nothing like it, it'd be the predictable thing if nothing else honestly not mad that Dane picked though I didn't I would have picked it but also I wouldn't have thought of it I but you can't be mad at that Dane pick. My only issue is, outside of scoring, Dame won't have enough other stats that are boosted enough to make you go, yeah, that's an MVP. Because um, I was thinking one of you going, one of you were gonna say Kevin Durant. I don't know, bro. I don't. I don't only like because that. if Kevin Durant <laughs> comes back, even in some kind of like, he doesn't have to be what he was, but if he comes back anywhere close to what he was, that comeback, that comeback story, that comeback narrative that people are going to push, even though, like, it's not really a comeback, but, you know, just an injury, and it's, 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 anything is an Achilles injury, right? Which yeah. is, which has been detrimental for uh, plenty of people's careers. If he comes back from this and it's, like, averaging, like, I really, the Nets, I can see him averaging 28, 30 points a game this year. Like, I really can and if he comes and does that, like, he even might have an MVP. The issue is, I don't think, like, AD's going to be putting up crazy numbers. And he was, like, a second in defensive player of the year last year or something like that. So, yeah. like, so like, <laughs> if he does with his thing on defense, but then on offense, he goes out there and averages what? Let's say he averages 26, 11, and five, he's he gonna win MVP. Like he's gonna win MVP, and those aren't crazy numbers for him, especially when we look at how uh, Jonathan's numbers been looking. Like those aren't crazy numbers for AD, and AD's game is much more uh, versatile than uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah, I give you that all day. Uh, okay, okay. So on to the next one, right? So we have MVP, and I think I personally think Rookie of the Year is probably the second most interesting. I'm gonna say important, but interesting um, award, end of the year award. Yeah. So I'm personally, oh, what easy pick? I'm going with Lamelo, and here's why. Yeah. Here's why. And I was listening to Gilbert Arenas talk about this as well. He's in the perfect situation where the mellow isn't uh so when with the with the Hornets, he is who the team is going to build around. So he gets to do whatever he wants to do. Not wants to do, but you know, everything's gonna be ran through him essentially, right? Like, even though they had Devontae Graham and they have, you know, Briggs on them, like, you're it's still going to get ran through LaMelo. And he's a point guard, so he, like, legitimately has to have the ball where Steph Curry's going to go off. And for him to get the ball, or for Wiseman to get the ball, let's say, he, Steph Curry needs to give him the ball. Or, you know, Wiggins needs to give him the ball. You know what I mean? Like, like, like he's not the main ball facilitator and the ball man, the ball manager. So, no pun intended. So, um, so it's just a different situation. And the same thing with uh, um, Blanken from Minnesota. Soda. Uh, uh, Anthony, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards, I'm tripping. So, Anthony Edwards, he has, he, he's, he's the third option. He's the third option. Russell and Jonathan Towns are the first two options. No, bar none. And they're still young. You know what I mean? So, like, they are going to make the best decisions, obviously, and they want to get theirs. 
Like, they just want to get theirs. So, LaMelo Ball, not only is he incredibly talented, but he's in the best situation to become Rookie of the Year. And I think him, and I think the only one who could even, the only one who who's even going to challenge for that is Bobo, who was still able to be, uh, nah. who was still able to be in the Rookie of the Year conversation because he only played in the, in the NBA uh, regular season during the during the bubble. And he was in G League during that, the, the season part of the season before then. So he's still able to win rookie of the year. He won't though. Yeah. He won't he won't also because the because of a weapons thing. But these he's the only one I think has even have has a chance to uh contribute and that's only because their best player is like their best passer too on the Nuggets. And that's Jokic. So but I do think at the end of the day Lamella Ball is gonna be the one. I I maybe Maybe this is just me being too op- optimistic. I feel like Edwards might be in a position as well. Like, granted, like y'all said, he's not necessarily the first option. But, like, one, he's probably going to get opportunities to handle them, like, to, to like, be the, like, playmaker. Um, and, like, he can do that. He can create off the dribble and all of that. But also, like, granted, like, if you paid any kind of attention to what he was doing at Georgia... He struggled a lot because he didn't have the talent like that. His, the two, like, um, Town and, like, Russell are much better than anybody he could have, like, put, like he played with at Georgia. So, like, his number, his, he's, he will be more, he'll probably be a lot more efficient. I imagine he'll be a lot more efficient, like, his first year out than he was in college. And, like, that alone, if he takes, probably if he takes, like, half the shots that he took in college or, like, he, like, he's going to take fewer shots regardless. Like, he'll probably be in contention whether or not he actually wins it is a separate thing. Plus, like, regardless of all the talent that, like, the Timberwolves have, they're not a very good team. Yeah. So, like, he's going to have opportunities to show that, like, he can be the guy. Like, it won't quite be as pronounced as Ball's chance over in, like, Charlotte because Charlotte... Outside of, I think, what, P.J. Washington? In fairness, I'm probably selling some dudes short. Like, they're, they're, but, like, they're not that, they're not that good. At least not to, not to, not as far as, like, starters and things. Yeah. I mean, Devontae Graham probably probably should have won uh, most improved player last year. Like, he probably should have won that award. But, or he, or not won it, because, uh, because uh, Ingram should have obviously won it. But he should have been, like, number two. He was, like, number two or three. Like, he was up there. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, Malik Monk is going to be Malik Monk. He's, he's, he's not panning out to what he should have been, obviously, but Terry Rozier, he there for another year or two. That's it. That's it. He, he get out of here. Cause he is not having, uh, all these other people are going to come in and just like push, push him out essentially to back to where he was a backup point guard. Cause he is a, Terry Rozier is a backup point guard who got into a situation to make himself seem like he had, he had a burst. When that Boston run, when Kyrie got hurt, he had a burst of, oh, this man's, like, really good. But at the end of the day, he's a backup point guard. And yeah. Calvin's right about, like, their options are ready. But I do think that, like, even though Anthony Edwards has, hasn't played with people as, you know, skillful as uh, Towns and Russell, but I think that whenever you're a third option, your numbers of what they could have been are going to be deflated anyways. Uh, so. Lamelo, no, Lamelo is, it's his to lose. Just say that. Yeah, I gotta agree with you on that, <clears throat> on that, Philip. Because um, everybody else is kind of like handicapped to a certain extent in their position. Like, um, did you? I don't know if you guys watch too much preseason, but apparently that offense is not going. The offense in Minnesota is not going to be kind to uh, Edwards. You know, it's not going to be kind to Edwards, especially. Because they got him in a corner a lot, and he can't exactly shoot. We're going to see how much improvement he's going to get there. But I, I completely agree with you, Calvin. He's going to have some spurts where he has it. I just don't know if he's going to chain enough of those up for us to really get that conversation. But Lamelo, on the other hand, that man already got the media hype machine. Like, and he's going to be like a sixteen to seven dude from the jump. Like, it's it's going to be kind of hard to deny the numbers, the production. And weirdly, this is, like, one of the better Charlotte rosters in the past, like, five to six years. 
Yeah. Like they have dudes that are going to like you if you want to key in on LaMelo, that's cool. You still gotta worry about Gordon Hayward. You still gotta worry about Devontae Graham. And then just like as a playmaker, LaMelo's gonna make everybody else look better. So Bridges can't really do much, but he's like a super athlete. We're gonna see plenty of a, like windmill off alley oop catches from LaMelo, and it's it's gonna be like it's, it's going to be enough highlights we're, for us to go ahead and not and like wash out everybody else. We're going to see, obviously. But in two years, this Charlotte team could be, be like good. Like, you know, they aren't going to win championships, whatever it is. But, you know, fourth seed, fifth seed in the East, good in like two years. You know what I mean? Third, 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 ah. possibly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charles, like, nice. East. Yes. Okay, okay. So, so give it some time, because their roster is mad young. So give it some time, and we're going to see. And obviously it depends on trades and who stays or goes, but their core right now, it's like a solid core. And one of them's a rookie. So, like, you know, prove us wrong. Yeah. Uh, but next on the list, who's going to win Coach of the Year? Because the year. I think Stan Van Gundy. And here's why I think that. Quote me now. The Pelicans are going to be a top five or four seed in the West. Stan Van Cunney, if he gets that team from not being in the playoffs to a top five or four team in the West, the West, you know what I mean? And um, you have that Zion hype train behind you. He legitimately has a chance to win Coach of the Year, and if he and I've watched the Pelicans during the the, the preseason, like they're better, they're, they're they're better. Like all the teams that made it into the playoffs or had a chance to make it to the playoffs in the eighth seed, they're by far better than them. Like like they are, and they're all playing defense, like up like, <laughs> and not turning the ball over either. Like against the Heat, like Drew Butler wasn't playing, but like they were like. It, it, it looks like they how they played last year, except much more, like, compressed and, you know, less um, forced. Like, like they look like a really good team. And Brandon Ingram, and, and Zion's already just 31. He's already playing good minutes, 33 minutes. Brandon Ingram's doing his thing, dunking on people, shooting that three. Lonzo, 18 points, nine rebounds, seven assists. Like, like they're... And they got J.J. Reddick come off the bench. They got Steven Adams, who's going to be, you know, all he does is set screens. All he does is set screens. And Lonzo's coming off the, the screens now, shooting a mid-range jump shot and making them. Like, it's, it, it's interesting to watch. And I think just for the situation at hand uh, and the room for improvement from when he first came in, that Stan Van Gundy has a legitimate opportunity to win Coach of the Year. I rock with you on that one. Yeah. That's fair. Um, that's, that's, yeah. I mean, when, when you lay it out like that, it makes sense. Like my first instinct was kind of like Ty, Tyron Lue probably gets it just because his team ends up that is a good like, one. Yeah. better than like the Pelicans, which isn't like they 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 already were. It's not like saying a whole lot. It just like something about it just feels like something that would happen to me. Um, but, like, Van Gundy's coaching job would probably be better. Like, just on the real, the job he'd have to do to to get the Mary Venice talent to this day, like, are, would be better. Because they, their team is more inexperienced. They're not quite as talented across the board and skilled, like, as good as they are. Um, so, like, it might be a situation where Van Gundy should have gotten it, but, like, Tyron Lou or somebody we're not thinking of, I don't know, Vogel or somebody, I don't know, like gets it instead. Because yeah. also a good one would be Doc Rivers, too. Ah, uh, yeah. Doc Rivers, if he does his job right, which according to players, like Doc Rivers is a good coach, you know what I mean? So yeah. Doc Rivers comes in and like, does his thing. Doc Rivers has a legitimate chance to also win that award. Actually, I might even change my 
like my, my opinion from Stan Van to Doc Rivers, just because they have Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. <laughs> like, like that changes everything. And they're and they're and their their stock was so low last year in terms in terms of you know certain things. Granted, their stock was only low because Ben Simmons got injured. Like if Ben Simmons would have played, then like I think the narrative amongst that team changes. But he was injured, so he didn't play. So all of a sudden, they got out the playoffs early, and like no one was really upset about it because everybody expected it. Because your second best player, suspect, no, I'll say your second best player got injured and was not playing. And it's like a really, really, really good All Star level second uh, best player. So take that away. Doc Rivers comes in, and they get to. Eastern Conference Finals, they get to, uh, you know, second round of the playoffs. Doc Rivers could win Coach 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 of the Year. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I like the <clears throat> I like the Doc Rivers pick because he is his role would be like somewhat easy. Mm-hmm. You know, the Seventy Sixers finish as the six seed. If he can get them in the top three, we're already talking about much better. And their road record was awful. Like twelve and twenty six. If he can flip that, where they're like closer to five hundred, I think we're talking about like a completely different. He's talking about a completely different storm. But I got two dark horses. Dark horses for y'all. Mm-hmm. Rick Carlisle with the Dallas Mavericks. Mm-hmm. They were the seventh seed. I can see them making their way up to the fifth. We got to think about how the East. I don't know what the Rockets are going to be. I mean, in the West, I don't know what the Rockets are going to be. Uh, coming into the season. I'm just not sure what we're going to see. Um, Chris Paul didn't exactly drag the Thunder to the fifth seed, but he oh, was close. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He put the boys on their back, on his back. That Thunder team's going to be nice. Like, oh, yeah, it's, like, it's going to be nice. That Thunder going to be nice. Like, if you want to watch some fun basketball, but you have Chris Paul, so, like, somehow efficient, like, watch that Suns team. It's going to be something different. Yeah. And then my second dark horse. It's gotta be Steve Nash, yeah. We're always we all we're always enamored by the new coach, especially if we can see a difference in the way they play and your players excel. And they were the seventh seed. I can see them creeping up to be a top four seed. Both of their stars are gonna produce. And just depending on what that system looks like and how much his hands are in it, I can see them being like, let's go ahead and give him a nod. Or at least look at him. I can, I can see that. You said it what? better not be Steve Kerr. You said Steve Kerr? It better not be Steve Kerr. Because Steve Kerr, the Warriors didn't make the playoffs last, last year. So if Steve Kerr comes in and or, – or if, Steve, if this year happens and the Warriors do like – because the Warriors are making the playoffs. Let's not get it twisted. The Warriors are making the playoffs. Because Steph Curry makes that much of a difference. If the, if the Warriors come in and let's say for, for S's and giggles, let's, let's say they make four seed, right? Mm-hmm. Four, no, they wouldn't make four seed. Let's say they make seven, seven seed, uh, seven seed, six, seven seed through four seed. Then, like, people, people are going to put Steve Kerr up there. But they, he shouldn't be up there because we saw what he did last year. Boo boo, garbage. You weren't coaching very good. Like when when it was, when it was time for him to coach, he underachieved. Uh, when he had like an opportunity to truly coach, all of a sudden when your Steph when your when your Steph Curry comes back, and all of a sudden you do good, we're not gonna give. You should not give the credit to Steve Kerr. You once again should give the credit to Steph Curry and you know whatever. In fairness to him. And like I say this as somebody who doesn't think he's a particularly good coach, I think he's probably kind of mediocre. Um, that like, truth be told, like I don't think there's, I don't think you could find a coach that could have gotten that Warriors team into the playoffs. Like, that coach not, 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 not in the playoffs, but to look like an NBA team. <laughs> like, Fairness, like, I didn't watch if you're in the so NBA, if you're in the happens. NBA, that's a minimal expectation, and they were worse than that. They barely had NBA players last year. Like, Kai Bowman was starting for them at some point. Do you know where Kai Bowman went to school? Boston College. Nerd. <laughs> 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 but, like, in the, in Nerd. The, against Kai Bowman, Kai Bowman is not a starter in this league, at least not yet. So, like, 
And those are the type of guy. Like, your best player was, like, Pascal. Like, Eric Pascal. Like, that should be no one. That's, a, no, that's like, was, the best player on the G League team, but that's not the a best, best player on the Draymond NBA Green. Team. No, he's the third best player on the, on the championship team. Their best player was Draymond Green. I mean, like, even if he didn't play enough. I, I love it. It's just like, I even if it. you make that argument, I guess he probably didn't play enough. But also, his game is one that complements other people's games. He can't carry a team. He's just, it's just not how it's set up. My bad. I, my bad. I, I, I forgot his game was one that complements the greatest players of all time, not like a normal, not like your average basketball player. My bad. That was on me. I mean, if he makes him better, he's still not. I did like, take that. I know, just cut to trash him. Like, but, <laughs> there was nothing uh, done. Might as well, might as well start Pascal and Bowman. Like, you're, they, but, you're not making the playoffs, and you realize that quick. But Steve Kerr just better not be in the playoffs, or better, better, better not be in the conversation at least, because yeah. we've named four other people, and that Suns head coach, he legitimately could be coach of the year if the Suns play the way they're supposed to play. Now, um, just 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 from the expectations of the year before coming into this year, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, in terms of record and all that kind of stuff. Because the Suns, the Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and Aiden. You should be doing good. <laughs> like, like there is no excuse. There is no excuse right there, right? Because Chris Paul, also with Devin Booker, Chris Paul does not need to work as hard because Devin Booker is legitimately that good at scoring. Like, like yes, you with Chris Paul worked very hard with James Harden, all kind of stuff. But also, Devin Booker's game, he does not hold on to the ball as much as James Harden. Like, like, like Devin Booker's game complements more because he he cause he also can just run off screens and all kind of stuff. And they have a huge body in Aiden who can like finish at the rim. And make those screens, they are poised to do very, very well this year. And their head coach, and I'm not, what's what's his name? Monty Williams. He is poised to have a very successful chance at winning coach of the year. Granted, I didn't think the coach of the year conversation would become like the biggest conversation we have, but we've had so far. But uh, I guess that's the way things, that's the way the fiddle blows. That shows how much like the league is like weirdly changed this offseason. Like there's a Weird. there's like a lot of furniture moving, yo. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um now next next I say we get into who do you think wins the East and who do you think wins the West? And let's start off with the East. All right. Uh, so okay. um so when it comes to the East, I think I think the Bucks. Okay. I think that Drew Holiday pickup was huge. Like, I truly think it was a, like, it's not being pumped up to as much of a bigger, like, it's going under the radar somehow, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure how that's the case. That's a huge pickup. And in a team with Giannis, who was already MVP level, Chris Middleton, and their number three is Drew Holiday, who, who, who people have said is the best guard defender in the league, right? They put him up there with uh, Kawhi. He said, he, or Kawhi Small for it. But in terms of defense, like you heard the mention the conversation of Drew Holiday being up there. Him being that good on defense, and he can penetrate and make the jump shot, which is most important, and make the three. With like efficiency, that is a pickup that changes the whole dynamic of the Bucks. And you know, you don't miss Eric Blesso and you don't miss George Hill once you pick up Drew Holiday. You don't. So I do think that they have an opportunity, depending on how, depending on the growth of. Boston, I see. That's a lie. I, I think Boston legitimately needs one one more player. I think they need one more player to go along with Jalen Brown and uh, Tatum. Taco. But like, say it again. I just said Taco Fall. Oh no 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 <laughs> yeah we don't <laughs> want no ta- I mean, ta- Taco ain't the one. Uh, but they need one player. The Seventy Sixers, depending on because, uh, depending on how. Doc Rivers coaches them. They have a chance to be like second seed this year, second third seed, because Doc Rivers like he's got cachet amongst the league, so the players respect him. 
and like so enough to work hard for him. Uh, and uh, the third best, uh, the third option, Harris had his best season under Dark River, under Doc Rivers. So we can see that season translate into this season this year. Then for him specifically, then I think they're close. But I do think that it is the Bucks to lose this year. Like if Giannis, if Giannis can't do it this year, Giannis can't do it. But he signed that five year. But he signed that five year extension, so he's stuck. But this is this like this is his year, because let's say they go up against um, the Nets, right? And so the Nets would be a good one. They match up well with the Nets. Drew Holiday defensively matches up well against you know Kyrie. Kyrie's gonna get his, but Drew's also gonna get his. And then Giannis and KD and and Mil- like that, that's, they match up with everybody perfectly because all three of their best players play the game differently. There's the Bucks play the game differently, and they all take up a different aspect of the basketball game. So I think the I think it's the Bucks to lose. I I don't know. Maybe this is recency bias. It almost certainly is, but I kind of feel like. Granted, like, even with everything, I think, like, the Heat are going to have an opportunity to, like, win the East. And I say this with a, like, and maybe this is just with the perspective that, like, one, they, they went to the finals. They lost. They're going, they're, they're going to be hungry for it. They're going to want to, they're, they're going to want to get back there and actually win one. Um, you're, like, um, what's it, Hero and Robinson will both be older a bit like have a bit more experience under their belt they should improve um hopefully they they like them and none uh get better defensively it would help immensely um but like outside of like uh butler and uh Dragic, like you can like it is reasonable to expect that everybody else pretty much improves um, and I, in like, I think that that combined with, you know, the good coaching that they consistently get, and like, I think they might just kind of, what's the best, what's a good way to put this? Um, they might just kind of will, like, they, they might, it might just kind of be like a force of will thing. Like, they just decide we're going to be the best team in the East, and we look up, and it's, a, and like, it's the thing. Like, they just outplayed everybody, every game, or something. But, I don't can, know. It's, it's, can we acknowledge that Allen apparently got his superpowers today because he just, uh, <laughs> he just teleported <laughs> from room to room? That was nuts. <laughs> but um, I like both of y'all picks. I'm going to be basic. I'm going to go with the Raptors. You have no arguments. Have kept all of their wait. Can you y'all hear me? No, no, I hear you. Yeah, I'm trying. The Raptors I have know. kept. I hear you. You tripping? You tripping? But I hear you. No, they kept all of their players. You got Fred. You got Fred Van Vliet. You're basically running back the same squad in. Hopefully, um, Pat. Somebody talked about Pascal about having more than just the spin move, and if he has more than just the spin move or just one counter, I think he's a much better player that can actually lead this. Not lead them because the leader is still going to be Cal Lowry. I, I just think they got enough dogs where they can they can eke out enough wins, and their their coach is going to get them there. So I, I think I think they got one more run. I think this is the last the Raptors, for, uh, Raptors. I think the Raptors are one player away. Just like Boston, I think they're just one player away. Like, and when they had that one player, they won. Now they don't have that one player. So I just think they're literally just one player away mm-hmm. uh, in that same Boston category. They're going to be good. They're going to make the playoffs, right? They might be like a four, five, six, or four, three, four, five seed. I would say they're probably going to be, right? Especially a team like that is built for, for the regular season. But when it comes to the playoffs, uh, I don't see them going all the way. They might make it to Eastern Conference Finals, but I don't see them going all the way. You know what I mean? Um, so let's transition to the West. Wait, you talking about, like, come out of the East? Or you talking about just – I thought you was talking about just win, like, the conference. 
I'm thinking like they like the like the Raptors could just win. They the Raptors could go to the Eastern Conference Finals. Like I can see that happening, but like you need that extra player to like take you over the hump. Yeah. And they don't have that. I thought we were talking about seeding. If, we, if we're talking about like, I think they can get the the number one seed in the East. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't think they can come out of the East, but I, I guess I should just oh, okay. pay attention to the question, right? But also, I also think that they want to come number one. Cause I do think the Bucks are also just built to become number one. Um, so let's make this transition to the West. Um, when it comes to the West, the team that's been – sit again? First, I reflexively said Lakers, and I thought about it. It's probably going to be the Clippers. I, like, Lakers are going to find a way to, wet, to rest their defense. Are you talking about coming out, or are you talking about who's going to win number one? I don't think I'm confused. Just, who's who's, who's going to have the, the the one seed going into the playoffs? That's all I'm addressing. Okay. So the person who's going to have the one seed going to the playoffs – from the West is probably going to be I'm going to say it's going to be the Clippers. That yeah. ring ceremony that's going to happen tomorrow in front of the Clippers, a Clippers that, should, that shouldn't have lost. You know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. Like, the Clippers shouldn't have lost, right? I, think I, it's I feel like they should have, but that's just because, like, they choked it. If, if they should have won it, they would have won it. Well, like, they, they only have to get one game. But granted, that's a, that's a strong argument. Like that make like, tr- that's not an argument. That's like truth, right? Right. But but they ended up not playing as good as they should have, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. Towards the very end, I guess. And I do think that they have enough players that this ring ceremony that they're about to get is just going to rub them a different kind of way. <laughs> like like in in and I think it's going to be used. Especially Tyron Lue. Tyron Lue is a good. He's a good coach. It's going to be used as like a motivational factor. And for some teams, that doesn't really. For some teams, that works to an extent. But you know, you need other you know, entities to truly make something happen. But I think the Clippers are good. Are good enough that if they have a certain kind of motivation, then that they can they can become from really really good to great. And it doesn't. It won't take that much except a sense of motivation. And apparently, apparently, Tyron Lu is trying to run a similar offense as the triangle this year. Um, to that get will not work. To, but to that's get separate thing. But, uh, no, a similar. Uh, it's not. It's not. But it's. But it's not the triangle. It's just similar. Has similar facets to the triangle mm-hmm. to make Kawhi the most efficient mid-range shooter in the game. Not have to be so forceful to get the mid-range. But to put them in specific spots to just the Kobe spots and the MJ spots, but it's but it has like it, but so it's not the triangle. It just has trinkets of the triangle, which Tyron Lue can do because Ch- Tyron Lue played in the triangle when he played for the Lakers. So like so like he is a perfect person to like like Tyron Lue just knows what needs to happen to make the team successful, and we're gonna find out really quick what how we're gonna, we're gonna find out really quick. The schemes that are being ran, because I think Kawhi can Kawhi's. You can't blame Kawhi about last year. It's up the last. He he didn't show up that last game, but he showed up in every other game prior to that singular last game, right? So you really can't blame Kawhi or Kawhi for last year. You know, no matter what system Kawhi's in, San Antonio, Toronto, Clippers, Kawhi's gonna do Kawhi. But we're gonna see really quickly about the other players, especially Paul George. So if Paul George can, like, it's not you making the shots, but it's, like, how you're making the shots, the positions you're in to make to, to, to shoot these shots. In the first couple games, we're going to see this. So, literally, after the like, first five or ten games, I could easily change my mind. But I have no reason to not trust Tyron Lou. I just don't. Like, there's been no reason. Like, in his whole career as a coach, assistant coach, I've only heard great things about Tyron Lou from – from, you know, the players and the rest of the coaching staff and so on and so forth. So I have to be proven wrong on this, but as of right now, I'm going to say that monkey on the back for the Clippers is going to motivate them to do things that are going to be deemed pretty incredible this year. Um, so, all right, if I might real quick. Granted, you said it's some sort of modified thing, so I'd have to look at it and see. 
But, like, my hesitation was when you say, like, they're going to be trying to run what's basically the triangle is that, like, you need a certain setup to successfully run the triangle, right? And I don't think they have that setup. Namely, I don't think they have a good enough big man to really pull it off. Um, because, like, their, their starting center is Serge Ibaka and their starting power forward is Marcus Morris. Nothing against Morris or Ibaka, but, like, one of ours considered Morris a bit more of a wing ish but more more to the point like they're they're not good enough to like play that big man role i feel um so like if i feel like if they run it if they run the triangle granted i have no idea what kind of modifications they might attempt to make like they might actually be slightly worse off for it just because Gr- like you, hmm? granted the triangle they're gonna run is like it's obviously there's like the, mo- the motivation is for Kawhi. It's all for Kawhi. So mm-hmm. it's not. It's going to be less. Obviously, it's going to be less big man influenced because of you know, or best less big man offensively influenced in terms of scoring the ball. But it might be like just move. Let's get the ball to you and move the ball. Like if you get the ball to a blocker, he blocker, a blocker, blocker. If you get the ball to Ibaka on the block, he can score on the block. A little turnaround here, a little turnaround there. But I'm pretty sure the motivation is just to get the ball. Get the ball move, move, get the ball moving, and just get Kawhi that mid-range. Like, like it's not going to obviously be the same. It's like, we've seen this. It's not going to obviously be the same triangle. But I think you make certain modifications, uh, especially, like, like they know the triangle much more than we do. It's point mm-hmm. period. Like, this man was in it. You know what I mean? So, like, I kind of, once again, have to, have to, have to be like, you have to prove me wrong. You know what I mean? Because right now I'm giving I'm giving Tyron Ty Lue all the praise, I guess. I mean, well, I'm not even saying like he's. I'm not necessarily gonna argue he's a bad coach, but like I'm not sold on him being a good one. But I'll take people more closer to it. I'll take their word for it, you know, before my own. But like, it's just like just historically, like in the league, right? To really run it, you need a really at least one really good ring player, and you need a. Very good to great big man, right? Um, and like, probably you need another really good wing player, too. Like, and the main and the main hitch here is, of course, the big man thing. Like, you have the wing players, like you've Paul George and uh Kawhi Leonard, but like, uh, we'll, we'll see. But like, I, I do feel like they'll probably end up with the one seed. In the West, for no other reason, like the Lakers will find ways to phone games in, um, like to 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 protect their two best players. Um, I feel like the Nuggets will probably get third because they want first, but like over the course of the season, like I feel like they might because they are still a younger team. They'll probably make enough mistakes over the course to keep them out, and like they might it might be worth their time to find some way to get bowling games just to give to get them the experience and like you need to short Porter's defense somehow like so like at some point I can see them like throwing a handful of games away to try and get to try and work on particular things and then like once you get pat once you get below them everything is kind of wild because <laughs> like Golden State, like Curry's coming back. Granted, what Clay's still out for another year because of an injury. If memory serves right. Um, like the the players on Memphis' team are gonna try their damnedest to get in the playoffs after like the that play in game loss or whatever. Like the Trailblazers still exist. Um, New Orleans, like you said. Um, Dallas. Suns. Hmm? Dallas. Dallas. Like it's like once you get past the like once you get past the first three who I feel relatively confident about, like, there's no guarantee anybody ends up in any given position. Um oh yeah, the I feel like I personally feel like the Rockets are gonna be better than like people necessarily think they will be, but they won't be like they they won't be Harden's Rockets. Um and also, like, I'm not sure they're going to trade Harden. 
Like if he keep definitely if he keeps like 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 up with doing whatever he's doing now because like they're gonna feel like they can't get good value back for him. Um, and like I've heard that like Wall and uh, Cousins both have looked fairly good in the preseason. Granted, I don't put that much stock in the preseason. Like I I put about the same amount of stock in the preseason as I put in summer league games, which is to say not none, really. But, you know, it helps do is get in shape and whatever. But, like, supposedly they've looked halfway decent. And, like, that might be a value in, like, talking about them, given that they haven't played a lot of basketball in a while. So, like, the West is going to be interesting. Hmm? I made some good points with the Clippers. Is y'all both agree with the Clippers? Uh-huh. Yeah. How many games y'all think Kawhi actually? I feel like that's going to be a big part of it. Like, if this, if this is the offense that is supposed to go to get them the number one seed, if he only decides to play, like, 50 games this season, then we got to go with the second best wing on their team to be in Kawhi's position. And that's going to be Paul George, and I love his jump shooting, but haven't we been, like, crushed enough by Paul George over the past, like, month and a half? Of like the last what like twenty games of the season, mm-hmm. where we're like shaking enough that if that's going to be kind of the dude that's going to carry the team when Kawhi isn't there, like that's my whole reason why I can't. They can't be my number one seed this season. Like I'm, I'm leaning towards what? the Nuggets. I already know it's like super dark horse. I just think they have enough. They have enough dudes that can score where it's going to be a rough. Like, who are you actually going to choose to shut down? If that jump Jamal Murray took is real, that's going to get you at least 24 a game. Then we got to worry about uh, Michael Porter Jr., who I think is probably going to be good enough to probably get you 20 points next season. He might not be able to stop nobody, but he's 16 and he can get you 20. I'm mean, actually just going to worry about like they show up his defense. If they show up his defense, he can start and they can keep him on the floor. <laughs> Michael Porter Jr. has a chance to win most most most, most improved player. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. that that should be his, honestly. Yeah. I just think they they have a good enough offense and they're young enough where I don't think they're going to miss games like that. And then they have a healthy uh, buddy who was out, Gary Harris, who was mm-hmm. out like most of the bubble. He's going to be Will Barton too. Like all of those, like that a healthy. Nuggets team, you're running like eight dudes that can really just go out and get you a bucket. And the I- Nuggets are built for the regular season. That is, like that's 100 percent true. Like the Nuggets are built for for the regular season. And if Michael Porter Jr. steps up to where he should be um, this upcoming season, and Bull Bull st- supposedly like steps up to where he's supposed to be this upcoming season, also, then like. <laughs> That's a good team. Like, especially for the reg- for the regular regular seasons, their their superstars or their stars aren't going to take off. Like, they don't got that. They can't take off. So like, they're deep enough and have enough to legitimately be the number one seed. So I got I can definitely definitely see that that one as well. Um. Okay. So with that being the case. Uh, I think those are all the predictions that we truly care about, unless you all have, like, a specific person you want to talk about. I really don't. Um, I mean, like, I slid in the whole I don't think Harden's getting traded thing. Um, well, you did slide that in a bit, okay? okay, okay. But, like, it's not that, like, I don't think they're going to try, but, like, he's just making it hard. Like, he doesn't want to be there, but he's also making it harder for them to get him out. Because, like... If you're a front office and, like, you care about, like, your locker room and whatever, and you already know, like, how Harden's offensive game is set up, like, in terms of, like, how, like, you kind of, you're probably going to have to adapt your folks, like, your general game plan to pro- accommodate him in all likelihood. Yeah. Um, that, like, like if, if he's going to, like, cause locker room issues, I might, like, if I, if get, especially, like, considering the type of players you have to give up, like, they're going to want you to give up to get him. Like I'm, I'm not sure I would do it. I think I thought I think I skimmed and saw something like the Heat aren't trying to get him anymore. I guess they were trying at one point. They decided not. Because like the thing is, the Rockets want fair value for Harden. 
But like, if he's, but like, if you're not one, like, you're gonna get him. What? Assuming like they do it early, hypothetically, two seasons. In that that in like in like it like guarant like guaranteed, and that assumes he doesn't have some issue with where he ends up or something. Um, so that like he makes it. He's made it kind of hard for people to want to give up fair value for him. Um, and the Rockets, while they are willing to wait out to try and get fair value, and like Harden is willing to like check completely out, <laughs> and like it's just he's just gonna put himself in a position where like he's stuck there. He doesn't really want to be there. They'd get rid of him if they could. But they're not just they're, they're not gonna do like something where like they just like here have hard and we'll take your your bench player and some dude to help match salaries like they're not about to do that like they they're gonna want like Ben Simmons or like Bam out of bio or like they're gonna want a lot and they're apparently want and like given that like they are apparently not particularly interested in like a, a Nets pick that functionally guts the team and like gives them all their young players. Right, that like the it's at a certain point it's probably just not worth it for a lot of teams to try and like pursue Harden because like you're gonna get Harden but like you're not gonna have a team around him to play with for real. So you know it's what one step forward, two steps back at a certain point for most teams. I feel. Yeah. I gotta go. I, it's, okay. I heard a take where the issue with Harden and, like, his behavior isn't so much that he can do it. I mean, it's not so much that he does what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. It's that it looks bad with the teammates. With that being said, as a person who was just, like, never a star player, if our team's best player, who's consistently averaging like 36, and can do that whether he went to Atlanta or Las Vegas the other day, come back and still give us 36. Do you care if he's like the practice? No. Like I, 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 don't I mean, no, but I'm a care if he doesn't show up. But, I'm not. Why? Like you, you know, like I think that's one thing for certain of- people. I think it's one of the things that we saw during the uh, the the last dance doc- doc- documentary. There's certain players that can just go away, do like there's just certain players that can like can do certain things that other players can't. And if the team wants to be successful, everybody's got to know who they are and what their role is. If you're, I don't even like at this point, if you're Demarcus Cousins, at this point, if you're Demarcus Cousins, not Demarcus Cousins of three, four years ago, mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. If James Harden went away, or let's see, that's a better one. Gerald, Gerald Green, right? Gerald Green. <laughs> this won't ever happen because he's like, that's like his number one dog. But for instance, a player like him, if James Harden went away, went to, I don't know, whatever that man does, then doesn't come to practice, then he shows up the next day at practice, Gerald Green can't be mad, especially if James Harden comes back and like averages what he does, knows what he's saying. He mm-hmm. can't be mad at it because that, whatever he's doing, Productive. As long as it's not de- detrimental to his health, whatever it is, productive for our team. So I got to be comfortable in myself being like, I know I couldn't do that. But but unfortunately, apparently, uh, a lot of players just don't know. You, you got to know who you are. And as soon as that player knows who they are, I would not care if James Harden went away and did whatever he did, did miss a practice or was a late to practice, whatever it is. Because at the end of the day, he, he going to drop buckets for us. I, I, I would assume the thing, though, isn't like, that the like I would imagine the issue is in and of itself that James Harden d- decided to like go to like some strip clubs somewhere or whatever. Like I don't think anybody cares about that. I think like if you're if you're a teammate though, like you. What what am I trying to say? Like it's um. Throw something in there. If you two are a star and you are coming to all the practices, I see you getting upset with, uh, like, like Westbrook. Westbrook can mm-hmm. get mad at Harden. Chris Paul can get mad at Harden. Nobody else should be getting mad at Harden. Just, just, just collect your check. Collect your check. 
go to the fourth seat, be happy. Because <laughs> you, it's not like your, it's not like your offense is like wildly intricate where, like, you kind of have to learn a bunch of like moving things, and you guys all need to be Damn there. The offense is going to be standing in the corner and let James Harden do the work. Like that's that's what it's been. Like, listen, if you're that other player on the team, you work hard. Don't worry about James Harden. You work as hard as you can possibly do. You do. You work. You work your butt to the bone. But don't worry about James. Don't worry. Don't worry about James Harden. Let him do him. You do you. Argument. That's in- argument. This is what got. The, that's that's what got the Rockets to where they are now, though. Where were the Rockets? What is the the cap for the Rockets? In a way, has been James Harden. But one of the caps has been. You literally just, you went, you had the gauntlet of the Warriors. So the chances of you beating them for the past, what, five years were very slim. And then the Mm -hmm. one year when you had the chance, Chris Paul's hamstring blew up. Like, like that's not, that's not James Harden's fault. Like, I get it. It, I get that he was gassed (laughs) out in a couple, like a couple seasons. But that's because he had to do everything. (laughs) <laughs> no, no. Remember that one playoff series where they mocked him the game seven or six or something like that, and the Rockets just for the game or for the second half missed every three. Missed every three. James Harden missed every three. Everybody missed every three. So we got to this point because of James. We got to this game to miss all these threes because of James Harden. It is what it is. It's, he's, a, he's, he's, a, he's a superstar. He's the best player on your team. All of a sudden, we get there, we all missing the shots. So you you can't blame this one man. You got to blame like, everybody. Oh, I mean, like, that's that's completely fair. I'm not saying don't. Like, there's not blame to go around or what have you. Like, he, like, just never showed up. But I feel like if, and maybe this is kind of a coach's perspective thing, like, if it's, if you have, if you're attempting to establish a certain like culture or mindset, it's kind of important that one, of course, that you have buy-in from like your best player, but also that like your best player knows themselves a certain way. In this case, I guess the issue is like Harden doesn't want to be there. Like regardless of the whys, he doesn't want to be there. He has no interest in being there. Like I think like at some point he'll probably just miss a game to like go to the strip club or something. Maybe that's just me being negative, but like more to the point though, it's just like. Like, I also feel like, and like I've mentioned this, that I don't feel like a team can win playing how the Rockets, like, a team can get a championship playing how the Rockets played. And, like, at some point, Harden's probably going to need to adjust his game a bit. Like, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, but, like, the team, but, like, the way the team plays will definitely have to change. Like, and... Crap, I don't even know the point I'm trying to make at this point. Just that, like, I don't know. It's like, yeah, he's, he's the best player on any team that he goes to. But, like, if it handicaps a team's ability to, like, actually compete for a championship in a way that they may have been able to, if they were a little bit more patient, and, like, he might just want out or, like, you're not going to have him on a long-term deal. Because, like, hypothetically, he goes to the Timberwolves. He's not staying there, like, past his contract. Like, he's just not. So, like, at a certain point, it's just, like, you might, like, you might as well just have whatever you have and try, and, like, put, and, like, do everything you can to put your players in the best position to win and create a culture where, like, they are, like, players are willing to, like, sacrifice to, like, get the wins. And, like, James Harden is not a sacrifice. I don't think he's a sacrifice to get the wins player. At least he hasn't shown that recently. (laughs) Okay. My only hesitancy with that is since Harden has been with the Rockets, the system has been Harden go get a bucket. Like, even when Kevin McHale was there, it was hard to go get a bucket. And then, then we just know it, it got worse with Dan Tony. At some point, it feels weird to blame Harden for any of this. Because let, 
let's say he's not doing the work that he needs to be doing, he's still got an MVP. He's still averaging 36 points. You can't really do much to stop him. And it's not like he's doing it with, like, poor efficiency where he has to... He is he is shooting a lot, but it's not like he's shooting, like, 4 of 26. Like, it's just really hard for me to blame the dude who's super productive, one of the best players in the league, and we can all kind of see, it's like, we can all say that's not, you can't win a game like that. Like, is it, it's Harden's job to be like, hey, we need a new offense? Uh, but it's just, okay, I guess here's the th- my thinking with it. Like, and like, granted, like, there's a lot going on over with the Rockets at the moment, new GM, new head coach. Um, like, like, for the time that Harden's there, new supporting cast, um, and, you know, Harden doesn't really want to be there, but, like, to the degree that, like, you, you would talk to Harden about things, and, like, I don't know how Silas is trying to, like, run their offense or what have you, to the degree that, like, Harden pays any attention to what Silas cares about, um, like, at a certain point, like, I would just, like, my thing with it would be, like, that whole thing, like, if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same results. And, like, the results that you're getting with Harden, like, yes, he, he's winning scoring titles and, like, averaging, like, 30 a game and whatever and having crazy numbers. But it's like, you know, like, you haven't gotten to a finals, right? And, like, the truth of the matter is as far as scoring titles is, like, Dudes that win scoring titles don't win championships. Not in the same year. Unless your name is Michael Jordan or Shaquille O'Neal. Like, it's happened... In in the history of the NBA, it's happened seven times. Six of them were Jordan. Right? And the other one was Shaq. And as good as Harden is, he's not them. He also hasn't had their supporting cast, in fairness to him. But, like, it doesn't change the basic fact. And, like, Jordan won it in spite of how, like, Phil Phil Jackson tried to do him. So, like, maybe, it's like, maybe we should try something different. I agree with you. All I'm hearing is the Rockets need to run the triangle. (laughs) Actually, that's all I heard. that's (laughs) That's not a bad idea. That's, okay. that's not a bad um, idea. I mean, listen. James Harden gonna do what James Harden does. He just happened to run to the prime Warriors for most of his like able championship years. Like, it's unfortunate, but it kind of is what it is. In terms of his legacy, you have to kind of realize that though. Like, it's, there's always a context to it, right? And he has a he had chances. But he had, or James Harden and the team and the Rockets had chances. But the issue is the chances they had, they're just going up against like an all time dominant. Team. I would say team, because it was two, it was technically two separate, separate teams. Kevin, Kevin Durant changed that entire team twice up. But at the end of the day, James Harden had, had, had to play against both, <laughs> which, is, which is annoying. If but I, it is what it is, right? And that's completely fair, but if I made the, like, if I was going to make some argument, like, we just hypothetically start talking about his legacy, at least as it currently exists, like, that wasn't the issue last year, and, like, like last postseason, and, like, last postseason, like, the Lakers existed, and the Clippers existed, but they lost to the to the Thunder, memory serves. Or was it, like, lose to the Lakers? Yeah. They lost to the Thunder or the Lakers? I'd... Who? They didn't lose to the Thunder. The Rockets. I'm, I'm talking about the Rockets. I'm, hold up. Huh? I believe the Rockets won that series because they got that big block from. Uh... Okay, but they it, they win the series, but like the the the, the Thunder took them like seven games, and then like I don't remember, maybe it was the the, the Lakers basically broke their spirits or something. And but like that's when. I, but 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 the issue is they had they had a Russell Westbrook. But the bubble, and a little bit before the bubble, well, not, not, not even before the bubble, actually. The bubble, the bu- before the bubble, they were looking fine. They were looking good. 
The issue was in the bubble, and I saw it, and I'm sure plenty of people saw it, but Russell Westbrook was not playing like he was playing like he's playing like like like, like a like a, like a filtered down version of himself. Like okay. even, like all his game is is explosiveness. And he was nowhere near as like, he's getting he got blocked so many times in the bubble. His explosiveness was not there. And I don't know why. It could have been an injury, but for a reason, it wasn't there. And I do think that they realized that you couldn't just put any point guard with James Harden in him and for him to be able to succeed. And that they really missed out on Chris Paul. Like, like Chris Paul, for one reason, but one of the main reasons I would say is because he he could hit the open the open three. Chris Paul could hit the open three and a contested three and knock it down with efficiency. Russell Westbrook couldn't. And that did not do their team any wonders whatsoever. So I think that that team last year, while they were fine, but they were no championship contender at all. Multiple years before that, they were. I think last year was the first year that we were like mm, that. Like you saw spurts, but at no at no time could you go last year. That team's gonna win a championship, especially that non that small ball nonsense. Not one point could you go. That team's gonna win a championship. Granted, I don't think Dan Tony as a head coach will ever win a championship, and that's because his schemes are so awful offensively, and he disregards defense. And I think it has something to do with it also. But mainly it was uh, Chris Paul not being there and that replacement with, with Russell Westbrook. And Russell Westbrook just not looking like the same guy in the bubble last year. So I'm not – last year is – the last year I would say was the beginning of the end of like the Rockets. I'm, I'm going to say that. Or I'm going to say the end. But it was definitely the beginning of the deterioration of the Rock Rockets. That whole season you kind of just saw it. But then – you can't say that about like the last like five, four seasons before that though. And at that, um, I think that is about it in terms of the what's uh, not superlative in terms of the preseason uh, predictions. That's fine. Oh yeah, we wanted to talk about the uh... Rudy Gobert. Okay. Yeah. So Rudy Gobert got the highest. Contract for a big man ever. Can you guess who number two is? Joel Embiid. No. Andrew Drummond. Close. No. Andre Drummond. My bad. Um, hold on. Uh, Wait, Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin. Yeah, number two. But Blake Griffin makes sense. Rudy Gobert doesn't. <laughs> Argument. If you value defense. Like, yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. So, like, yeah, like, the thing with him is, like, it the, him wanting a max contract given, like, level of defense he plays and everything, it makes sense. The issue, the issue is, like, he wanted a super max, right? And, like, even as somebody who really likes defense, like, if you want a super max, like, I'm going to need offense and defense, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to be, like, 20 and 10 almost. And probably give me some assists and stuff. And, like, that's that's, that's not Gobert. Like, I, matter of fact, in the entirety of the league, I can think of, like, two centers that, like, I, like if I'm a GM, I would supermax. What, right, like, right today? Yes. Well, you're talking about uh, Joel Embiid mm-hmm. and... Who's who's second one? Jokic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, doesn't uh Towns have 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 a supermax also? I don't think he has a full supermax because you know that was like the rookie extension basically. Because they have like tiers for like supermaxes. Like you can get one at the seven year mark and you can get one at the ten. And I think the ten that's that's the big bucks. Okay. Well, listen. If you want a supermax. My one question is, can I run the offense through you and win? If the answer is no, because at the end of the day, you got to score. Mm-hmm. If the answer is no, you ain't going to supermax. Yeah. If the answer is yes, we'll see. Rudy Gobert, that's a no. Mm-hmm. So he don't deserve no supermax. It's simple as that. In fairness, he didn't quite get the supermax, is my understanding. 
<laughs> well, he shouldn't get super max. That's that, that's all I'm saying. They gave uh, Donovan Mitchell one ninety five though, so that's nice. I mean, yeah, I just want to see Donovan Mitchell. Oh, I don't know. I don't You're like a hater. Trump. You're a hater. You sound like a hater. <laughs> I'm yes. not a hater of Donovan Mitchell. I'm fine with him, but for some reason, his game doesn't tickle my fancy right. And like every time I watch him play, you know, like you watch a you watch a player a player play basketball, and they're good. Well, they're obviously good. When we watch him, it's like something a little off. That's like you're like, do I like your game or not? You know what I mean? And for some reason, I, so for some reason, I, I, I'm not even sure if I can articulate it. But Donovan Mitchell's game doesn't just hit me in a good spot. I'm just like, I see you're getting all these points. I see you doing the thing, but I don't know. It's something. I, I, I'll figure it out one day. But right now, I can't even figure it out. I've been thinking about this for like a year. I think I think what it is like, and granted, this is like based off watching him in the bubble. Is it like? I don't think you like dudes whose game is more about the energy they put in than whether or not they're like smooth or whatever. I think it may be the, like you, you like players who like their game is aesthetically pleasing. Right. Which would make sense because my game wasn't aesthetically pleasing. So I'm just like, why would I like people like that? But, but I understand what you're saying. That's beside the point. But it's just like, and like, Mitchell's game is more about the energy than being aesthetically pleasing. He's more he's he's closer to being um, Jimmy Butler than he is to being Kyrie Irving. Yeah, stylist. The thing is, I didn't. I don't know. I I, I guess. Granted, I also hate Kyrie. So, but <laughs> I, but no. But I get what you're saying. But I, I'm not sure. Even, I'm not. Almost funny. I'm not even sure if it's even him. You always hear comparisons of him to Dwayne Wade, and I think I hate the comparison more than anything else. Like that's not who he is. Like, and Dwayne Wade. Like, let's not let's not be frank about it. Dwayne Wade, a top three shooting guard of all time. Like Dwayne Wade's number three behind Kobe and Michael. Like, yeah, there's like Reggie Millers and there's Ray Allen's like. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of people that are there's a, there's a bunch of people that are that are, that are top six, Evan, or that they're not a bunch, but they're, we obviously know like who they are. But Dwayne Wade, you can make an argument, but you can make an easy argument that he's number three. And I'm just like, you can't compare Donovan Mitchell to this like right, right now, like no, you just can't. And I'm not, and he, you can't even compare him to early early Dwayne Wade. Their games are completely different. So I'm just like, so much like I think that bothers me more than anything else. If I'm being perfectly honest. Makes sense, bro. Yeah. Oh, and um, <clears throat> last one, wrap this up. I just kind of really want to see where Philip had at, had his head on that. Uh, the Lakers finally submitted their big three after giving Kyle Kuzma three years, 40 mil. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, listen. <laughs> Kyle Kuzma is the best he's ever going to be was last year. You got a championship, yeah, but he ain't, he ain't do nothing with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was a lot more integral pieces. Rondo was way more integral in that championship than Kuzma ever was. Easily, and it's not even debatable. This man getting conversations to get that much money, like this man's only good with other good players. If you put, if you took Mitchell right, if you took if you took Kyle Kuzma out right now and put him with and put him with Dallas. He would be just as good, maybe worse than Harrison Barnes. Argument, he'd probably be pretty cold given who he's playing with in Dallas. But that's well, the Dallas, yeah. <laughs> I say, he play, I, give, I give him one good player, Luca, and Luca gets, gets a lot of assists and makes teammates better, right? Like if you're still down Luca, granted, if you're still down Luca to an extent, then like you're tripping. You don't watch, but you're not a smart basketball person to talk basketball with. You know what I mean? But I gave him Luca, and even with Luca, this man's gonna be. Like, when's the last time – I can't talk to you about the uh, Allen because you live in Dallas. But outside of Dallas, you never – like, Harrison Barnes used to be – was my top three favorite college players of all, all time to watch. And then he went to the Golden State and had his run there. Then uh, Sacramento? And then uh, – no, Dallas and Sacramento? No, it was Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Dallas and Sacramento. Okay. Oh. When's the last time you heard anybody talk about Harrison Barnes? I mean, they didn't really like Harrison Barnes in Dallas anyway, but – but they yeah, it's also like a really rough. Either. But they like paid him money, right? They paid him money, though. Yeah. They paid him money. 
Carl Kuzma don't get paid money, but if he wasn't on a team with LeBron James, if he wasn't on a team with uh, if he wasn't on a team with LeBron James on a team like Anthony Davis right now, then he's wouldn't have. Okay, he is he is another guy who's gonna be out of the league in seven years. You know what I mean? But it's so like that's kind of annoying to me that he got that kind of money. But a lot of people, are getting, a lot of people are getting money that they don't deserve in the NBA right now. Like it's just it's just, just the market. When I want to say deserve, like obviously you deserve to be in the NBA, but I mean like. Like, it's just the market, you know what I mean? Like, LeBron got Tristan Thompson to get paid. Anybody can get paid. You know what I mean? So, I'm just glad he didn't get the Allen Crabb contract, where he was almost making 100 mil. Listen. Because that's that still confuses me. I didn't know who Allen Crabb was at the time. I was like, wait, what, what are we doing, guys? LeBron made Mo Williams look like he was all... LeBron made Mo Williams an all-star. <laughs> like, like, it happens, yeah. Like, like, Kuzma got this contract because he played with LeBron. In in fairness to Kuzma, if you take the decision made, like if you put him with a LeBron or a Luca or even like a Trey Young, someone where you functionally take like the where his scoring opportunity, like the the thinking about what like where he has to score and what and whatnot, functionally out of his hands. Like he's a good complimentary piece. Like oh, yeah. the thing is to do the better off you are. I think this this is. In LA, there were two people that got a contract since today. Luke Kennard and Kyle Kuzma. Next year, or this like, or man, tomorrow. My God. This is so nuts. Um Luke Kennard's gonna have a better season this year than Kyle Kuzma. I think that's the perfect thing to end it on. I like that bite. Let's get it. All right. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Best prediction of the night. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening to an episode, another episode of the Traveling Hoopers. I am your host, Alan Pettigrew, I'm signing still, off. What's up? Are we still recording? Yes. Okay. He's not on, on top of mind. That's why I was asking. Oh, okay. We we signing out by the way, y'all. Well, I mean, oh, like, like once you know, once again, I'm Calvin McGowan. If you know you're looking at this on YouTube, you like it, you know, like, share, and subscribe. Um, you know, listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts and all that. All right, and um, oh, my name's Philip. You know, hey, shout out to this uh this Christmas mixtape I'm dropping uh Christmas Eve. Uh, you know, so look out for that. Um, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be big things. Well, in the context of what I consider big, which is nothing. Um, so look out for that, and uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. Listen to me as you open presents Christmas morning. It's a rough household if you're listening to this podcast while you open up Christmas presents. No, I'm talking about my to, to my, to my mix. They, they oh. should be watching the Gonzaga game. That too. Oh, Zag is crazy, by the way.